What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Fallen Tide TV. As always, my name's Nate, and uh, I'm back for another squirrel hunt out here. That's where me and Gary were at on the uh, last video. Gary couldn't make it today, so I'm gonna go out here solo. I'm gonna try something a little bit different today. So, so usually whenever I squirrel hunt, I walk a little bit, I stop, I listen, walk a little bit, stop, listen, look in the trees. But a lot of these old timers will tell you to just pick a spot where you know you got some squirrels, sit down on a log, and just watch. And so that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna go find a good spot where I got three or four oak trees, like where I can see them uh, visually and, and within shooting range. And uh, I'm just gonna sit down on a log or something, sit down on the ground and uh, and just spend the evening. I might, might walk to maybe one other spot if I'm not seeing anything, but for the most part, I'm just gonna be sitting, just sitting and watching in one spot. So yeah, guys, I'm about to get the gun loaded and go ahead and walk on in. Uh, only got about a couple, about two or three hours left until it gets dark. So I don't wanna waste it sitting here. I want to be out there hunting, so I'll see y'all out there. My goal is to shoot one or two going into where I'm trying to get to. And if I could do that, it'll put me ahead. So I'm looking at all these little oak trees I'm passing up. I don't think that those have too much acorns on them, though. There's an oak flat back here I'm trying to get to. That's the oak flat we were we were walking down on the last video whenever me and Gary were hunting together. I see a squirrel up here is on the ground. Show me your face. Got him. Sweet. He was hopping around on the ground. I was just waiting to get a glimpse of him. Go run over there and grab him real quick. We well, almost to where I wanted to stop and hunt. All right. First squirrel of the day, y'all. Sweet. That's what I'm talking about. Come on. I only saw him for a second. You about to mess up. He messed up. He was trying to he was trying to go down there to get a hole in the knot right there. The other squirrel was sitting on the tree right there. And I wasn't quite sure if that was him or not, so I didn't want to shoot. And uh whenever he saw me, he shot in that hole. And then all of a sudden I see this one coming out of this pond. He ran down the tree and he was trying to sneak his way down to get in that hole. And uh, I saw him the whole way down. I was just waiting for a good hole to shoot through. That squirrel's still barking. That's good. Two squirrels down. Go pick up a squirrel. Another little male squirrel. Yeah, I think somewhere's in here. That's where I'm gonna sit. 
I'm gonna sit somewhere in here. Sit my butt down right here. Well, I've never hunted like, quite like this before. Uh, I think only, I take that back, I've hunted like this one time. There was one specific squirrel that I wanted to shoot and I knew where he was living. And uh, I hunted when I was a kid. This was a big, big, big fox squirrel. But that was the only other time I hunted like this. But I have, I have a big oak tree over here. I have a small oak right here. I have a small oak there. Small oak here. Big oak there. Small oak here. And there's a lot of acorns on the ground right here. So I'm just going to sit back. I'm just going to kind of sit back. And uh, just, I also have another big oak right here. I didn't mention um, I'm just gonna sit back and just watch all these trees and just see what happens and see if I have success doing this. There was an owl that came through. I mean, it's, it swooped through like right here. And uh, I, t I just so happened to turn the camera off right before it happened. <laughs> and he swooped down and there was two squirrels on the ground like right here that one of them went that way and one of them went up, started barking. It's not that far. <laughs> well, I guess if that squirrel was on the ground, then everything is kind of settled since I last shot, so that's good. There he is. I spotted him for a second. I see a shadow. I don't think I see him. Come back on this side. Pretty sure I hit him. He hit the ground and ran. Yeah, I got him. He's just right there. He's still on that tree right there. There he goes. I don't know if I got him or not. He was on the ground. Let's see if I got him. He was on this tree right here. And he hit the ground. There you go. Where'd you go? Oh, there he is. Come on. Could be a different one. I must have missed him.
Can't believe I missed it. I can see his little tail flickering right through here. I guess I missed him. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna pick up my squirrel. I hit this one and he ran. So I thought I missed him, but, but no, he ended up dying. Oh yeah, I was just sitting by that tree right there. <clears throat> well, that was two squirrels that showed themselves within, what, 15 minutes maybe? I don't know, I think that that sitting down method does work. And that was two squirrels that I just came out of nowhere, kind of. This third one. One, two, three squirrels so far. But hey, look, I mean, success. Doing it the old timer's way. I call it the old timer's way because every time I talk to one of these old timers about squirrel hunting, they always tell me the same thing. They always say, man, go pick you a spot and just sit. You just sit down and watch it. You know, two or three trees where you know you got squirrels. You just sit there and watch, and uh, and you'll have success. And and I've been told that a thousand times. I, I never do it. I've always squirrel hunted just walking. And uh, I see why they say do it now, because I mean, I, I, when I walked in, I walked right past those two squirrels and didn't even know they were there. And yeah, you know, in the second one, I didn't, I didn't not get it because the strategy didn't work. I didn't get it because I missed. I wasn't quite patient enough with my shot. So, I'd say this method does work. It does work good. All right, boys, I'm gonna push ahead a little bit and I'm gonna go check these last couple of oaks that I know are here. You know, sit by them for a few minutes and see if I see anything. And I'm gonna spin my butt around and head back up to the front. I'm gonna sit on that first spot for the remainder of the evening. He's hit. There's another one over here. Where you at? spot I got two down squirrels right here you gotta remember this spot because I got to be able to come back to it because I got one right here one right here but I'm gonna go walk and get this one and come straight back you lose your spot and that's how you lose your squirrels that was awesome that was a that was a lot of patience right there y'all a lot of patience right there. I just sat in one spot. I sat in one spot and just waited. Just like the old time I said to do. I'm gonna go get this one and come back to this spot right here. daylight looking for this freaking squirrel. Bang. Man, I really hope I, I can find this thing, man. I don't think it was uh, all the way over here. I think it was right here, man. 
maybe on that tree or something or that one maybe on this one I hate losing animals that I shoot. That's probably, if you'd ask me what my least favorite thing about hunting is, it's this, this part of it. And I only got myself to blame because, you know, shooting a squirrel one direction and then shooting another one in a completely different direction and, and not making sure of your mark is uh, that's not a good idea and I knew better I just I don't want to I don't like I don't want to give up <laughs> I feel like it's, it's somewhere right in here and I just don't want to give up I'm going to grab the other squirrel. All right, I got this one. Tie the squirrel on here. I'll try to get that one. I'll come back and check for this one, and then I'm going to get out of here. I like the sitting still method. That's two different times that by sitting still, or standing still, I was able to get a shot at two squirrels rather than just one. Most of the time, when I'm just walking, it's one and then keep walking, Walk, one, keep walking. The sitting still method, you can see multiple squirrels and know where they're at before you pull the trigger. Cause you're taking your time more. Four squirrels, lost one, not too bad. Missed one. If I had the opportunity to shoot six, I mean, probably if I wasn't spending an hour looking for this squirrel, I might have had a chance to shoot a couple more. I might have got a chance at a limit, but here's what it is. Four squirrels ain't bad. Ain't a bad day. I had a good time. Other than that one squirrel that I couldn't find, today was great. I'm going to head on out of here and head on back to the truck, y'all. Alright, y'all. So, on the last video, I showed y'all how I clean my squirrels. On this video, I'm actually going to show y'all how I like to cook my squirrels. Um, it's very simple. Uh, most of the time, whenever I'm doing a dish, it's it's not very complicated. I'm not trying to get on the Food Network here. I'm just, I, I really just like brown gravies. I like to cook down uh, any kind of meat, pretty much. I like to cook down in onions and make a gravy. Uh, and eat it over rice. It's a simple way to cook. It's 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 close to my heritage, the traditions that, that my family passed down to me. And, and y'all seen it before, you know, how it's kind of similar to how I cooked the Nutra down in one of the videos that I did Nutra. Uh, it's also the way that I like to cook my coots, galanoo, rail, stuff like that. And also my rabbits, I like to cook like this as well. My ducks, I tend to make a gumbo or a sear uh, on, on either side and, and eat it kind of like a steak. But my squirrels, I like to cook down in onions, make a gravy, kind of like a stew. And I'm going to show y'all step by step how I do it. The first thing I'm going to show y'all is how I cut them up. So I've already got them cleaned. Like I said, if you want to see how I like to clean my squirrels, go to the other squirrel hunting video just before this. I'll have it in the description and also at the end of the video, the way you can click on it there. Um, it shows you exactly how I clean my squirrels. And this is how I cook them. So we're going to start with how I butcher them. So I've already got them cleaned here. I actually started doing it here. What I do is I separate it here. I quarter it out and I keep this chunk of the uh, the body here as well as you can see right here. I kept that piece of it and then I detach the front legs and the back legs. I'm actually going to show you all exactly how I do it. So I come in here and I get rid of the back leg just like so. Just like that. And then I cut it across right here. And then I split the front legs down the middle. So what you end up with is two back legs, two front legs, and of course the body there. This is actually the best part of the squirrel right here. So 
make sure that goes in there. Don't get rid of this. I know it's not a lot of meat, but it's the best taste of meat. All right, so the most important part to any Cajun dish where I'm from is a roux. And unfortunately, I don't exactly measure my roux, so I couldn't give you all an exact measurement here. But I'd say around equal parts flour and oil. Um, I typically just pour in some oil into a warm pan, pour a little bit of flour in a little bit at a time until I like the consistency. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pour the oil in and I'll show y'all whenever it gets to the consistency that I like. So whenever I'm making a roux here, I just usually pour enough oil into the pan or into the pot to where it just gives it a good coat on the bottom. And this is a big Magnolite here, so I don't necessarily want to put too too much. But like I said, I go about half and half, root to uh, oil to flour, and then we'll start mixing it up. And once it gets to the consistency that I like, I'll show y'all. See, look, we measure with our our hearts over here in Cajun country, and I got this fire on real low right now. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit, but I gotta get all of this blended up in here first. Now I'm gonna crank this up a little bit. A little less than halfway. And once it gets to the color that I like, now you gotta stay stirring this now. If you're gonna make a root, you're gonna keep stirring it. I'm gonna stand right in and stir this. And once it gets to the color I like, I'll let y'all see what that looks like. It's a little bit, it's a little bit too much for this dish. I don't wanna top this pot off. I only got six squirrels and you know, just, I, I don't want to make quite that much. So what I'll probably end up doing, and, and the good thing about making a roux is you can really never make too much because you could also can it and save it, you know? So, you know, it's part of the reason why you don't measure. You just go in and if you got too much roux, once it's all said and done, you just save it for the next dish. Well, you ain't got to sit here and do this. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take some of this out of here. I'm gonna put it in something, a jar, a, container or something put it in the fridge it won't be long i'll be making another dish that needs a roof before i know it this is about the color that i like right here for this particular dish so i'm gonna scoop some of this out of here because i don't quite need this much i'm gonna scoop out of here enough to uh you know have enough for another dish so i went ahead and killed the fire anytime you're gonna stop stirring this you're going to want the fire to be off. You don't ever want to be making a roux that's still hot and you step away from it. If your fire is on and you step away from it, you come back, your roux will be burnt. So, fire's off. It's going down in temp. I'm going to scoop a little bit out of here. And I'm going to stick it in this container right here for whenever I make a gumbo or something like that. I'll have some. What I'm going to have here is some simmering stock. I'm going to put over here, warm up this chicken stock. Put this on this back burner here. That way it'll be ready to go ahead and whenever I'm ready to start blending this stuff together. You don't want to put cold stock in that roof. It'll pop, it'll, it'll be it's dangerous. So you want to make sure that the temperature's up on that stock before you put it in here. I'm about to start browning up these squirrels here. Season them up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Got some of that Papa Earl's there. Not sponsored by them or nothing like that. They just, I just really like their Cajun seasoning. I'm just gonna put a little bit on there. And Look at this, y'all. Go on in here and brown this. I'm gonna brown it real good. Get a good brown going. I got more squirrel than that, but I can't, as you can see, this ain't a very big pan here. I wanna brown that up real good, cause after I brown this, I'm gonna stick my vegetables in here. The Holy Trinity. Stick that in there, and that's gonna get all of that up out of the bottom of this cast iron skillet. And all that flavor is gonna end up in this pot right here. So you wanna make sure you brown your meat real good and make sure you follow that up with putting them vegetables in there. All right, once you get that good brown on there like that, 
go ahead and take it off the fire. I added a little bit of butter in that. Go ahead and take that off the fire. Set it on the side. All right, y'all. We coming to the end here. The the browning part here. Look at that, y'all. Look how beautiful that is. See all them little burnt bits on there. That that's that's not something you want to waste. That's all good. And I'm gonna introduce some vegetables. And you wanna saute all your vegetables up in that. You're using vegetables up to pull all of that up off the bottom. So after your onions get soft, all your vegetables. And you done cleaned up the bottom of your skillet here. All of these vegetables need to go into your roux. But before I put the vegetables into the roux, I'm gonna take a little bit of the stock and put it in here to make sure I get all of this up. Just take a little bit of the stock, put it in there like so. Alright, look at that. Beautiful. Alright. And then very slowly add this in here with your roof. And you just start blending this in with your roof. Like so. You start adding a little bit more of that stock. Just add a little bit more. And you blend that together. To a, to a boil. See right now it's a little bit thin but it's because they got water in there and it's going to cook out. As this cooks it's going to get thicker and thicker and thicker so eventually it's going to be a nice thick gravy. Go ahead and add my squirrels. See that juice right there? Make sure you add that too. Good stuff. Be able to feed a family, two families. All this squirrel. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. I'm gonna let that simmer like that for a couple of minutes. Uh, the fire is really hot right now. I'm gonna lower the heat. I'm gonna stick the lid on it. I'm let that go for a couple of hours and then we'll check it. All right, y'all. Been cooking down for about three hours. Uh, I'm about to get a little bit of rice and uh, get me some of this delicious squirrel stew. Look at it, y'all. Give y'all a good look.
<laughs> there we go. Oh, that's good. Full of flavor. Ton of flavor. 